Hello, Eorzeans! I'm Lukeel Bravestone, and welcome to yet another episode of Remnants of a Realm. Last week, we looked back at Wineport, Red Rooster Stead, Shposhe, Sh Sh sorry about the typo, and the Path Companion. As usual, on our Patreon page, we teased one of the upcoming areas, and here is the answer. We're diving back into Lenosha and Camp Bearded Rock. Camp Bearded Rock was located to the west of Lower Lanosha, almost directly in front of Sefer Gate, leading into Limsa Lominsa. This was the first camp you'd ever encounter if you chose Limsa Lominsa as your starting city. Because the camp was a starting area camp, it was larger than most other camps in the area with three tents instead of the usual one you'd find in other smaller camps. The actual Bearded Rock is this massive rock here, once served to chain or crucify pirates who violated the code. Lominson legend says that the camp got its name from a prisoner who survived crucifixion so long that his beard encircled the rock. He eventually withered away, leaving only his beard, and thus the name Bearded Rock came into use. The Navy's first squadron, as well as the second levy Yellow Jackets, was based in this camp. Bearded Rock was also the location for behests, and because it had an etherite, served as a guild leave location. The camp was the go-to place for beginners to level up quickly. The mobs around the camp, mostly consisting of sheep, rewarded great EXP in early game, combined with behests and leaves. Camp Bearded Rock was connected to three ethereal gates. Cedarwood, Moraby Bay, and Widow Cliffs. For a lot of 1.0 veterans, returning to Eorzea in 2.0, things got confusing. Where is Camp Bearded Rock? Where both Gridania and Uldah's original noob camps are still operational, Camp Bearded Rock has disappeared. Well, it's... yeah, it's a little bit complicated. The Calamity caused extensive damage to Lenosha, and maps had to be redrawn. Lenosha split this part, what was previously known as Lower Lenosha, away from this part, naming this new area Middle Lenosha. Camp Bearded Rock was completely obliterated in the Calamity, and there are no remains of the camp to this day. The upheaval of the ground made the lands in the new middle Lenosha especially fertile, so it was decided to turn most of this area into farmland, and Summerford Farms was built. I wish there was at least something left of this camp that I could show you, like a piece of fence, a piece of tent fabric, uh, but no, there is absolutely nothing left of Camp Bearded Rock. Miss you, buddy. Back to 1.0 and we're traveling to the northeast again, to an open world dungeon called Cassiopeia Hollow. This, in contrast to Shposhe, was a classic guild leave dungeon, like the ones we've covered before. The dungeon was divided into four different areas with a small area in the center where the leave meat and ethereal gate was located. The cave complex was located in eastern Lenosha, just south of Camp Bloodshore. It got the name from the ever-present Cassiopeia-type jellyfish that would roam around inside the hollow. Inside the four rooms, you'd find its characteristic shallow pools of water and luminescent coral growths, as well as other luminescent life. And just like Shposhe, Cassiopeia Hollow was traditionally a destination for pilgrims devoted to Lim Lane. And, just like in Shposhe, locations in Cassiopeia Hollow bears the names from Lim Lane's ascent. The dungeon had, in addition to 10 guild leave quests, behests spawning roughly every 30 minutes. Cassiopeia Hollows was also the home to two notorious monsters, Bomb Baron and Unknown Soldier. The dungeon was also a prime location for fishing, having fishing points for Blindfish, Crayfish, Crimson Crayfish, Lamp Marimo and Nether Newt. Seriously, side note, is Crayfish literally everywhere? Uh, uh, anyway. In the Calamity, Cassiopeia Hollow's entrance collapsed, and it is no longer possible to access the dungeon. There is no mention of Cassiopeia Hollow anywhere in Bloodshore, but its location should be around this area. It could very well be here, the Garlock's Lair. As you can see, the entrance has mostly collapsed, and there is a path leading up to it, indicating that it did see foot traffic before it became a hunt target's home. Slight throwback to the previous episode where we talked about Shposhe, because I love that word so much. Remember when I said that that dungeon was probably the main inspiration for Sestasha? Well, it wasn't just Shposhe, as you can see. Cassiopeia Hollow has the exact same style as Shposhe. 
But that's not the only dungeon. Oh, no, 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 no. In addition to Spoche and Cassiopeia Hollow, there was a dungeon called Mistbeard Cove, please look forward to it, that had a similar theming going on. But wait, there's more. Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 had a lot of work in progress dungeons scattered around the maps, possibly expected to be implemented as the game got patched under Tanaka. However, seeing as Tanaka was booted off the game after just a few months, these dungeons never opened. I am considering exploring these dungeons in future episodes, but I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in this. Let me know in the comments if you're interested, slash wink. Anyways, let's leave Cassiopeia Hollow behind and look at something we no longer have in the game. Underwear slots. Yes, yes, it's true. In Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 we had separate slots for underwear. This system was in place at launch and was intended to serve as another stat slot. The underwear was not visible when wearing gear, but if you removed your gear, your equipment underwear would show. And no, underwear... <laughs> Underwear could not be removed. The underwear was not expanded upon after the restructure and was mostly used for seasonal gear, such as bathing suits and similar things. All existing underwear at the time had default stats for defense, but nothing else. One can only imagine what the original idea behind this system was. Today the underwear slots are completely gone, but the original underwear is still accessible today. They serve no other purpose than glamour at this point. Actually, that's pretty much the same purpose they served in 1.0 as well. <laughs> huh. Guess it hasn't changed that much in that regard. Now for this last bit, we're gonna look at something that was supposed to exist in 1.0 but didn't make it until 2.0. Crazy, I know! Titan. Titan was originally planned to be implemented in patch 1.21, but due to the 2011 earthquake in Japan, Titan was put on hold as to not offend anyone with an earthquake primal. Garuda was pushed out in patch 1.22 instead. But Titan was already more or less finished and ready. His character model, cutscene and arena was already in place and was just waiting to be implemented. This is the arena, the 1.0 naval, as found inside the Ugamaro mines. It does show that the 1.0 version of Titan was gonna be uh, slightly different from what we got in 2.0. And for those of you that haven't seen the original 1.0 Titan cutscene, feast your eyes on this.
<sighs> this cutscene makes me so sad. Ugh. Anyways, Titan did make his debut in A Realm Reborn and quickly became a primal we all loved to hate. And we reached the end once again, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great time. Thank you to all our Patreon supporters. You're pretty awesome. Uh, join our Discord if you want to hang out with like-minded speakers. Links in the description. And leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments what you think about the topics of this video. Did you know about Camp Bearded Rock? What of Cassiopeia Hollows? Would you like me to explore some unfinished 1.0 dungeons? Do you want the underwear slots back? And how would you imagine the Titan fight would have played out in 1.0? I will be back next week with another episode of Remnants of Our Realm. Until then, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal. <laughs>